So let's get into it today. I'm going to be doing my second video on the Mike Bickle scandal since some new information has emerged since the last time. So we're going to cover the latest information. Another high level executive from IHOP comes forward to substantiate the claims against Bickle. And a worship leader who started the House of Prayer with Bickle, Misty Edwards, has spoken as well. Mike released a sermon the week before the charges were presented, and we're going to take a short look at that. It's since been taken down. Also, IHOP has a secret weapon with inside their ministry that I think could be very helpful. So I'm going to release that information as well. We're going to get into this and more. So you're going to want to stick with me to the end. But it's important to note that these are still allegations at this point, and none of this has been proven as a fact. Here is a short statement from the IHOP leadership team that was done on Sunday at their, at their worship service. Read a statement um, that is from our IKC leadership team. And, as, and, and, and then I want to take a moment and pray. And then I'm going to hand it back over to, to Isaac. This is a statement from the IKC leadership team regarding allegations against Mike Bickle. We are heartbroken to share that we recently became aware of serious allegations of sexual immorality directed against Mike Bickle, the founder of IFKC. Our leadership team takes these allegations very seriously, and we are laboring for truth, light, redemption, and righteousness. We are engaging with outside parties to assess and arbitrate these allegations. Okay, so that is their new uh, senior executive of IHOP Ministries coming forth with uh, that news on Sunday, breaking it to their congregation at Forerunner Church. But um, the last video that I did, you can check that out on my channel if you want. I covered, um, so you're going to see here, this was the statement that I covered in my last video by three former IHOP executives, Dwayne Roberts, Brian Kim, and Wes Martin who is the former pastor at Forerunner Church, that brought these allegations against Mike that were very serious in nature. And since then, other people have come forward. If you want to catch this, I covered this letter in my last video. You can go do that. But uh, we're going to cover the new information to this. So before I do that, I just wanted to go over something because many people questioned the motives of why I'd be doing a video like this in the first place. Two or three comments had came forward, so I thought I would address this. First off, I'm a small channel, so the income that come on these videos are like pennies. I spend way more on doing this channel than I take in. It's actually a liability. So I'm doing this because it's like a hobby, and I do this because I love the body of Christ. I'm hoping that this ministry will bring reformation, revival, and renewal. And I'm going to go after the tough subjects on this channel. I'm not going to, I'm only going to cover stuff that's pretty controversial, pretty, that's pretty heavy. And the status quo isn't working in Christianity. And the days ahead are hard. And we have to be prepared for that. If you want to hear someone talk about Kanye West's newest Christian rant or Brad Pitt becoming a Christian, then probably try another channel. This one might not be the one for you. But a lot of people might interpret these actions as being divisive, but my heart is really to see the church be all that it can be. I really love the church and want to see it become strong and prosperous and successful. So here's a quote that I'm going to read from um, J. Grissom Mahan. It is often said that the divided c condition of Christendom is an evil, and so it is. But the evil consists in the existence of the era that is causing the division and not at all to those who are recognizing the era and who are trying to correct it. The evil of the division exists not in the ones who are pointing it out and bringing it up, but in the era itself that's causing the division. Okay? It's just a wonderful quote there. Okay? Secondly, the second reason why I'm doing this is worldly media is covering this. And when they do it, they will do it with no redemption in mind. They don't care about the wake of destruction that this brings to the church. They will show no mercy. And the coverage on this matters that secular media does will take away faith and hope from people. Right? But I want to use this terrible story and spin it to give people hope and faith. 
like what the devil meant for evil, God uses for good. And this is the power of the cross. So I want to encourage people that IHOP is not done. And if they do the right things, they can come out on the other side of this better. Grief and pain do not have to make us less. They don't have to subtract from us. We can let it expand our souls and the grief and pain can help us become more than we ever were before. But we've got to be willing to embrace the grief and pain. Many in the charismatic world believe that this is not a part of the Christian life. Well, I'm here to tell you that it is. I also want to build people's faith after they come out of this video that they'll have faith and hope. Many will say that all leaders are bad. And the reason why that is, is because we tend to focus on the failures. But for every one that falls, there are 10 that remain faithful. But that coverage doesn't sell in the news. And when I make those videos, nobody watches them. There are many wonderful ministry that have 50 years in the ministry with no scandal. Let me mention just three. Derek Prince, Tony Evans, Kenneth Hagan have widely successful ministries with no scandals. Okay? And I'd like to mention also one of my mentors, Pete Scazzaro. Many years in the ministry, no scandals. Okay? So good leaders exist. And my pastor is one of them. But I chose him carefully. And I watched his life and his ministry carefully. And I saw that his house was in order. And so let me address something real quick. The Carl Lance scandal for a second. His church of 8,000 collapsed into thin air here in New York City where I live. And many of his former members are bruised and beat up. And now they're attending my church looking for restoration. This could have all been prevented. And after a third party investigation that they did into Carl Lentz's ministries, the findings show, drum roll please, Carl Lentz had zero accountability and unchecked power. They started to try to rein him in at the end, the senior offices at Hillsong, but it was too late. He was already a man out of control. These churches are part of the NAR movement the new apostolic reformation, which many people consider Mike Bickle a part of. I don't, he doesn't fit the description to me. But one thing that does fit the description is these ministries usually have no connection with the denomination and therefore no accountability. So my pastor has accountability and I've met with the people who hold him accountable and they are older and have more experience than he does. And in my case, I don't foresee ever having to contact them because I trust my pastor and know that he has high character. But many people don't think that they have to do this due diligence. It is not enough for your pastor to say he has accountability. Everyone claims they have accountability. I bet you Mike Bickle would claim that he had accountability. Well, I've met the man my pastor is held accountable to and I've trained under them as well and he brings them into the process. A church with unpacked, unchecked power is dangerous. Guys like Mike Bickle, Bill Johnson, and Todd White are like gods. And the truth is, is they have very little accountability. And they're part of charismatic churches, so there's no formal structure. Thirdly, these scandals keep happening. And we need to talk about these things to learn the lessons. To stop it from happening in the future. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And so I feel like these are all very good reasons why I'm covering this story. And I wanted to share with you guys my heart. Also, Dr. Michael Brown is covering this story, one of the main leaders in the charismatic movement. And he's saying all the same things I did. So if, if I'm off, then he's off. And he has a lot more experience than I do. So let's get into the new information here. Before we do so, let me mention this. Many people in the comments had mentioned Mike's fall to King David's, okay? This is what they call narcissistic exegesis. It's really hard for us to compare ourselves to King David, and we really shouldn't do these things. Saying that God forgave David and was not removed from ministry as well. Yes, this is true. Uh, God did forgive David, but David publicly repented and had a long, long process of grief 
and then publicly published the psalm in Psalm 51. So God forgave David. But, but, there's a big but to that. However, God did not remove the consequences of David's sin. And the discipline that came from David was very harsh. His household was judged. And he had no peace in his family for the rest of his life. His life and his family were in turmoil all the way up to his deathbed. So God does forgive if we repent, but he doesn't take away the consequences of our actions. Those things can last many, many years, possibly throughout our lifetime. So let's get into this. Misty Edwards posted something on social media that I think is really important because it'll help dispel some of the rumors that are out there. Let's get into this. Okay, so Misty Edwards posted this on Instagram and she said this, I am very sad like all of us concerning what has happened here at ITOP KC. It has been sorrowful week and my eyes are swollen with tears. I am not commenting on any of the women's allegations concerning Mike Bickle. However, I wanna make it clear, I am not one of them. I have worked with Mike for 25 years and in my personal experience, he has only been godly. I have been sent several social media posts speculating differently and I want to stay boldly. Those are entirely lies and are entirely based on suspicion. I have never been sexually or spiritually abused by Mike Bickle. So a big, you know, a clap for Missy coming forward and giving us this information. Uh, many people contacted me personally that are down at IHOP and, you know, try to give me information. I have to do my best to try to vet the people and see that the information that is serious or not. And originally I was told that, you know, Mike, that Missy was one of the victims, but here we're finding out and thank God we go through the process. She is claiming that she is not one of the victims. And some of these people in this social media uh, post even attacked her. It was just despicable how Christians act on social media sometimes. It's just, oh boy, shaking my head. You know, she must be in so much pain. So, you know, prayers go out to Missy Edwards, who was one of the main leaders that started IHOP with Mike Bickle, sometimes playing on the piano for 12 hours. And here people are attacking her. So, but this turned out to be untrue. And it's glad that Missy posted on social media to to um, confirm all of this. But right now we're gonna take a look at Mike's last sermon. Okay, this sermon got taken down and what I feel are for very good reasons, thank God they took it out, but Sermon Index still has this up. And so you can see that on Sermon Index YouTube channel if you want, okay? But let's, let's play the clip to see if we can get some hints it seems to me like mike knew this scandal was happening and basically they were presented with the charges at this point why they let him preach is another subject totally uh, they probably shouldn't have done that but he released this message a week before the scandal was released and it looked like he was trying to um send a message here so let's take a look at this real quick david it sticks out over and over and over is how David trusted God to vindicate and deliver him. When he got, now, when he, if he's fighting the Philistines, a military conflict, he trusted God, but he killed him. But when it's within the relationships, within the redeemed community, his natural family or spiritual family, I mean, all of Israel's in the redeemed community in that general sense, meaning they were, you know, that's their testimony. He didn't touch them. He treated them differently than the Philistines. He'll kill the Philistines, I mean, with incredible success. But internally, he goes, I can't do this. I, I got to do this God's way. And the passage I love, I quoted the most, is 1 Samuel 24, 12. I've used it many, 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 many times. David says, like he's standing here before King Saul. And he had King Saul, most of you know, for seven years approximately, King Saul was chasing him, David. His son-in-law, David, King Saul's his father-in-law, because God anointed the kid to take over the kingship from the dad. And the dad didn't like this. He had 3,000 soldiers chasing David for seven years. There's some reprieves in there, but... So David, through this situation 
has Saul at the end of a sword. God set it up. David's in his 20s. Saul's in his 60s. David's got him. And Saul, like, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. You could kill me. And David said, I won't touch you. I will let the Lord judge, or other translations, let the Lord decide. So what David did is he invoked the Lord's activity. Let the Lord avenge me on you. I'm not touching you with my mouth or with my hand. I won't do it. God's watching me. And when you know that God's watching you and you know he cares, you don't have to vindicate yourself. You have to vindicate yourself if you're not sure he's watching or you're not sure he cares. Yeah, so it should be noted, like, if, if you watch the video, Mike definitely doesn't look like his normal self. Uh, he looks like someone that's extremely distressed and uh, is in a very, very stressful situation. At face value, it would seem that uh, it seems like this was a little bit of emotional manipulation. But nobody can comment on the intents of someone's heart. Only God knows that. But at face value, it doesn't look good that he's giving this sermon a week before these charges are pressed. And it should be noted that the passage that he's using is a Old Testament passage, and there is some real truth that we can extract from that passage. However, in my experience, um, using the statement, touch not the Lord's anointed, um, is usually, rarely ever done right or in the right spirit. Okay, it's one of the most misused verses in the whole entire Bible. And a lot of times when people invoke this scripture, usually it's done in the spirit of witchcraft. Like, line up and listen to me because I'm the Lord's anointed. Yet the New Testament has clear standards for those in leadership. And leaders should be removed if they don't fit the bill. So we have further instruction in the New Testament era. And there are times that we should relieve and remove leaders. However, we do so in the right spirit with the restoration of the person in mind. And that's what I want to try to get across in this video. I feel that there's hope for IHOP, possibly hope for Mike, possibly hope for the women that came forward, possibly hope for all the people that are attending this ministry. God wants to take this according to Romans 8.28 and turn it around for his good. But right now is a time for mourning, it's a time for loss. It's a time to sit in this uncomfortable place and allow God to let this pain do something more bigger than what we had in mind. Like it says in the scriptures, unless in grain, grain falls to the ground and dies, right? So basically God is looking to bring death and life. And this is the power of the gospel. How they thought Jesus was defeated, and but he, God spun this around and resurrected him and turned it into new life. But there was that process of loss for Jesus, for his disciples, and then God turned it around. So right now we are in the period of just being in grief and loss and being upset with this. We're not moving on to resurrections just yet. So another formula executive comes, came forward, and a lot of people um, are reaching out to me on my channel and basically saying that um, that basically oh you know these are just regular allegations anyone can bring allegations um, I don't think we should take these seriously this is a whole different situation my friends because you had three former executives come forward that were high-level executives that said that they interviewed the victims and the victims had stellar character and reputations and stuff so this isn't your average accusations that are coming against like uh you know like johnny depp and and uh and amber hurt okay these these people have all been in ministry a very long time the, some of the victims have been in ministry and um they're credible people and the people that have come forward is credible and speaking about credible people we have alan hood here who released a statement yesterday on twitter and another former high level executive that was the associate director of the whole IHOP ministry in the past, okay? So this is someone that has a lot of experience, somebody that really knows what they're doing, has a, a stellar character himself, and so we're just gonna go over this. So Alan Hood released this yesterday. As many are now aware, there are serious 
allegations of spiritual and sexual abuse concerning my spiritual father. So this isn't just somebody that's just a random person. This is someone that considers Mike Bickle his spiritual father. This is someone that he loves. This is a friend. This is a, like a family member, okay? I have been walking closely with one survivor and her husband, okay? So Alan is, is in connection with one of the, the women that came forward. And we are deeply broken for her. She and her family deserve our utmost care, trust, and discretion. I have also learned of corroborating allegations from other victims. This has broken my heart to unimaginable level. Furthermore, I am dismayed the survivors of the abuse and those who advocate for them being labeled as betrayers. Such speech shames victims and its egregious form of spiritual manipulation. I agree. As a former associate director at IHOP KC, I want to speak clearly and firmly. This is imperative to those at IHOP KC leadership team investigating these allegations by engaging in an independent third party organization that specializes in handling allegations of abuse in a church context okay so this is my commentary now they need to bring in a third party not a ministry buddy or a friend somebody that can come out from the outside and be objective a lot of times they don't do that and that's what happened in the case of hillsong with their pastor his father was a you know he was accused of sexual crimes and they handled the matter internally just just wrong all across the board so let's get back to the letter historically leadership's teams have been unable to effectively lead internal investigation processes Raki, ravi zacharias international ministries will church community church hillsong church we have also learned too many lessons from other church scandals roman catholic church southern baptist convention to think that ihop kc is immune from institutional blind spots the burden upon my friends at IHOP KC leadership is too weighty for such a task. An independent third party investigation is the only pathway for a godly and fair process for all the parties involved. I have spoken with the IHOP KC leadership team and they have assured me that this is their intent. There is only one way forward, a renewed commitment to holiness and to the fear of the Lord that demands honesty and accountability. The Apostle Peter warned us that judgment begins in the house of the Lord. May the Lord purify our hearts and give us a season of self-reflection and repentance. Alan Hood, Director, Excellencies of Christ Ministry. Okay, so another former executive comes forward to substantiate these claims. And this is bringing more credibility to this, to this case. I gave Mike a small possibility that these charges aren't true, but more and more evidence comes to pile up that is less and less likely, okay? And this is a close friend of Mike Bickles. So this was not just another person. Another statement that I found, which could really not be found any place, it took me like two or three hours to find this, was another statement that was was never released and i'm going to bring that up right now okay so this i couldn't find any place it took me like two or three hours to find this and this was in the initial statement of the investigation team which basically has uh you know three six it's eight different men members okay brian kim Dwayne roberts wes martin dean briggs alan hood michael sullivan Ari Herbert. Okay, so this is another statement of their allegations. Um, and this one was not released publicly for whatever reason. I don't know why, but let's just go over this real quick. Much to our deep sorrow, we are compelled to report that Mike Bickle is completely unfit for leadership of influence at IHOP KC and should be stripped of all messaging and moral authority to the water biter of Christ. This report will demonstrate the veracity of these claims and it is a clarion call for further investigation, immediate provisional action, and deep institutional reform. If further investigation bears out, and the findings of this report, even by half, Mike will be proven to be a perplexing moral contradictions 
but a, a confirmed sexual predator. For 30 plus years, it strongly appears that Mike Bickle has lived the double life, presenting himself per publicly as a model and a Christian leader and a disciple whose unrelented call to holiness and full surrender to Jesus inspired millions around the globe to his message, all while secretly wooing and taking advantage of numerous women under his care, shattering his marriage vow in a serial fashion. A number of Jane Doe's or their husbands have come forward sharing remarkable similar stories, languages, and methodologies, all without prior coordination. So the victims weren't working together, okay? Furthermore, with the clarity of hindsight, there is now reason to believe that Mike used his own platform, powers of persuasion, and employed legitimate biblical themes of forgiveness, overcoming accusations, David life story, and more to essential, inoculate the staff and global audience into an unwitting position of suspicion regarding legitimate, truthful inquiry, worse still for the victims of instituting fear that they should not release Mike from guilt or fail to infirm the narrative over his life. The sophistication of this message and prophetic manipulation are subtly calculated and shocking. While a formal diagnosis has not been made, pathological narcissism is in clear view. Each person responsible for the development or presentation of this report has been a longtime ally and friend of Mike, either as spiritual peers, brothers, or sons. We weep and rejoice not to disclose the material in this report. Humbly aware of our own flaws, our motivations, is fearful obedience to Jesus, sober, sober obedience to the process outlined in scripture, profound grief, and righteous anger on behalf of the alleged victims. Okay, so there was another statement that I found that was never made public for some reason um, that has circulated and it was very, very serious. They called Mike a sexual predator bait. So I just wanted to give um, some hope and that what I feel is like a secret weapon at IHOP. Um, you know, I had really thought about this before I did this, but I think there is one gem at IHOP that should be mentioned, um, and that is um, that is Stacy Bickle. Um, this woman is a powerhouse. I saw she preached there recently up on their page. Uh, she is a secret weapon in all of this. You guys have no idea. Um, I worked with her um, for a while. Um, with this one ministry that I'm associated with, she has this wonderful book that kind of tells a little bit about her life story. And um, she's just a wonderful person that has basically been through hell and back. And um, so I was a part of this ministry called um, Desert Streams Ministry down in Kansas City. And that's how I personally got involved in, with the House of Prayer. And she's part of the training team for Desert Streams Ministry. And um, this ministry focuses on sexual brokenness. And um, after, you know, almost eight or nine years of, of being in the world of inner healing and deliverance, uh, this is the most comprehensive um, inner healing program that's available in the body of Christ. I've seen several different programs. It's a manual, like 500 pages thick that basically deals with um, the healing of sexual brokenness and different things like that. So I just wanted to show that that manual and that ministry because I feel like they can be a great resource. They're right down there in Kansas City and Stacy works with this ministry. And since she's been through a divorce and some brokenness in situations in her past, I think she could be part of the healing process for many people down there. Obviously not a part of the investigation or anything that's going. But she has been through a lot of things and come out on the other side of this. I'll say Mike is lucky to have a sister like her. And she can be used in IHOP in the days of head because this material that's in this book is the best that I've ever seen. And it deals with sexual brokenness and some of the things. So she actually has training in this area. And I feel that um, just wanted to make mention of this, that she, in some ways she's like a secret weapon. Um, but I want to leave you with hope today hope and faith for a future okay these things are so important 
to the body of Christ, okay? And that's part of the reason why I'm doing these videos is because the media is covering this. Fox and, you know, so many of the worldly media has caught on to this and they just want to use this to ground and pound on the church. But if you're at high hop, don't leave now. I'm going to bring up a tweet from Michael Brown, Dr. Michael Brown, that's one of the main leaders in the charismatic movement. And I just thought that those at IHOP that are possibly watching this video could just heed what he's saying here right now. Okay. So Dr. Brown posted this on, um, on his Twitter account for those who are inspired to get involved in the house of prayer because of the influence of IHOP KC. Now is not the time to run from the house of prayer because of discouragement or delusionment. Now is the time to run to the house of prayer. Okay, so I just wanted to leave you guys hope. I totally agreed with what, what he said. This is not time for everybody to panic and make decisions based on what the enemy has done down there and run for the hills. That is a good ministry that I feel should continue. And so again, as I mentioned in my last video, I went through a high profile scandal at ORU seminary when I was there. And this, this scandal went through the whole entire college. It was the misusing of university money and power from Oral Roberts' son. And eventually it was found that he was guilty. It was so gross and disgusting. I, I just, I don't even want to get into it. Of course, we forgive him and there's restoration and hope for him. and. But he was removed um, forcefully from the ministry. And obviously he tried to thwart efforts for the cover-up and stuff. I ended up losing my scholarship and not being able to finish seminary. I was just devastated, devastated. But I can tell you this, there is hope. A donor came forward in the Green family who owns Hobby Lobby. And I got a chance to meet him a couple of times. Mark Green and gave the college $50 million dollars. And the university was saved. And ORU is a growing university that grows every single year. Enrollment is up. It's wonderful. It's still affecting many people. Um, as, as they rank all the colleges and universities in America, it's related. The, one of the, the colleges with the best experience for the undergraduates, okay? I was there attending graduate school. So, but it's just a great, great, great college. And so, you know, while we were going through it at the time, it's like, God, oh, this isn't going to end. This is over. This is done. ORU is finished. You know, Oral Roberts was like 90 something years old and had to come back to the college at that time. And I remember that day. I remember that day for the rest of my life to kind of rally the troops. And but ORU continues to go on and make a huge impact. So it doesn't have to be defined by one scandal. So I want to bring you hope. Okay, and do not lose hope over one leader. As I said before, there are so many leaders. We tend to focus on the failures, but there are so many leaders that have many, many years in the ministry. Do not lose hope in the ministry at IHOP that affects the nation, that goes out to the world. Do not lose hope in 24-7 prayer and worship, which I feel so dear to my heart that I still watch the prayer room. This is so needed in the end times. In some ways, that prayer and worship 24-7 is actually sometimes needed more than church services itself because we need a fresh drink of water. We need to be connected to the vine. We need to be connected to his presence. And this is one of the things that Mike Bickle did that changed the world that needs to live on the concept of 24-7 praise and worship and raising up others to that effect. Over almost 2,000 employees, staff, students attend this place. It's a mighty powerhouse ministry. IHOP will come out of this and new leaders will emerge. If you're at IHOP now, don't leave as a result of what the devil is doing. Unless you feel strongly, God is telling you to move on. The finest hour could be coming. God always has a David in the waiting in the wings. Okay? And speaking of that, in my last video, I released a prophetic word. And then few uh, came forward and said um, that they had a problem with the word and stuff like that. So I wanted to address that. I released a prophetic word about Isaac Bennett. 
and I said that he would rise up to take the head, head position at IHOP KC. First off, I wanted to say that I tested that word personally over a few months. And then after that, as I felt like it was God was speaking to me, I tested it and brought it before three other people that went along to confirm what I said. Now, this isn't a crazy idea because Isaac is already a senior leader and runs the Forerunner Church. However, if I could release the word again, I would say this. Because when you're in the spirit and you're seeing things that God is showing you, you don't always put the right words to them. And if you're really emotion like a situation like this, like Mike Bickle is one of the greatest end times teachers. I look up to him. He's my hero. I still am listening to his stuff. But if you're really emotional, you might not always use the right words in releasing a word. So please forgive me if I've done that. But I want to say this, right? If I could re-say it today, I'm not saying Isaac could or should take over. I would say it this way. Isaac's role and influence will expand in IHOP and he should be involved with executive decisions. But Isaac has to do what God is calling him to do. But I think he will play a big role in, in IHOP's future. And he should stay in his current, current role and allow God to bring him and the other leaders further confirmation. But what I just wanted to get across um, because a couple of people beat up on me in this is that God, I just see from watching IHOP for many years, the heart that he has, the gifting and callings, the talents, it just all come together that just seem like a beautiful combination where some of the leaders, other leaders that are there, the executive leaders, they've been with Mike from the beginning. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, many people have commented me, how did they not see this? How did all of these leaders not see what was going on right in front of their eyes? And Dr. Michael Brown brought that up as well. He said it's a very valid question that all the leaders should be asking themselves over there. But um, that's part of the idea and premise for going with some new leadership, with somebody that hasn't been there from the beginning. Um, as far as that I'm aware of. Someone that's younger and has a passion and isn't part of the old guard uh, with Mike Bickle and his team, okay? Because they definitely share some of the implication of all of this. Uh, you know, were you guys paying attention? Were you discerning things? You, di you didn't realize something was off? And again, this is not to bring judgment and condemnation, but to bring, a, you know, basically to, if we understand that, we can move forward and not repeat the same things. There's no condemnation in Christ Jesus for those who are in Christ Jesus, who are repentant and living actively with him. So I don't want to leave anybody with any condemnation. I'm just going to close the video for today. Thank you for being with me. Please comment down below. This might be a place for you to vent and get a catharsis, get these heavy things off your chest, to talk about it. We need to talk about these things. So many people are coming to me with like a religious spirit. How could you be releasing this video? How could you be talking about it? Actually, it's the opposite. We need to talk about this thing. It's the elephant in the room. So comment down below. Let me know what you think. I'll do my best to get back to a lot of the first comments. Down the line, it's sometimes harder for me to, to comment after I move on to some other videos and stuff like that. So thank you. Be blessed. Remember, Christianity is three things, okay? It's to love God with our whole heart, mind, and soul. We're, we're looking upward. Then we're taking that, what, what God has given us, that love, that affirmation, and we're taking that inwardly right? And then we're going outward, right? To love other people with the, with the love that God has given us, okay? So one thing that emotionally healthy spirituality says that I'm a part, that I'm associated with is very simple, is that our love for God and our love for others are mutually exclusive. So if we say that we love God, but we're not treating others around us with love and compassion, it's very hard to believe that. So God and Jesus made himself very clear. If you love me, love me with your whole heart and soul. And if you really do, you will love others. And in this situation, at a minimum, it didn't seem that that love went outward. I'm not questioning Mike Bickle's love for God. I'm not questioning his commitment to the ministry. But somehow that did not extend in love for others if these allegations are true. Okay, so we must love God. And that has to translate how we treat other people. 
I make mistakes all the time. I don't always treat people correctly. But if I find myself saying something rude or sharp, I correct myself, apologize, and I move forward. So Christianity is loving God. It's loving others, our brother, to love them as ourselves. And then thirdly, to go out into the world to preach the gospel, to tell people that the good news, that what the devil made for evil, what he meant to try to destroy, God will turn it around with his power, raise things from the dead and use it for his good. So everybody out there today, Romans 8:28, God works the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. He turns it around and uses that for good. But right now is a time for grief, mourning, and pain, something the charismatics usually aren't really good with, to mourn and sit with them. The book of Lamentations is a whole book on mourning. David, one third of the Psalms are inappropriate to use in a worship setting because David is pouring out with pain and saying, God, how did you allow this to happen? And God, will you rescue me? And why am I in these circumstances? And the book of Job is a book about suffering. So the Bible talks about this a lot, but we need to be able to sit with God in this pain and then allow God to bring the resurrection on the other side. Thank you for watching today. Be blessed.